Hello gentlemen and ladies, this is Hassan uh, from Chrono Studios and uh, I'm back on my tutorial series. So today I'm going to show you something uh, you're going to really really love and uh, it's about you know creating realistic grass in your uh, exterior renderings. You know realistic grass, you know lawn effects with HQ grass and carbon scatter. So the real, the real thing is uh, the plugin I'm using is carbon scatter and I'm using the elements from the HQ grass collection which you can download from um, CGPS. Uh, I'm just going to post the link uh, in this post. So it, it helps you to you know, generate very beautiful grass scenes. And uh, I'm going to show you some samples of uh, what, I'm, what I've done what I've done in with, with with this plugin, if you look at this rendering, you, you can see you can see this grass. Yeah, I uh, hope you like it. And uh, okay, if you look at this one too, it's you know just creating very real, you know, very beautiful grass in your foreground. And then for for carbon scatter, if you if you're working with um, dense ecosystems, you know you can create large large scenes without having to run down your resources. You know, you, you can in very easy, very few clicks and, uh, you know, very easy ways. So uh, I'm going to show you all those tricks today. And you can see, you can see the grass by the side here too. Okay, so uh, that's it. That's it about that. So uh, let's launch our 3DS Max. So here we are. Now the first thing I'm going to teach you is, um, you know, getting used to the interface of um, Carbon Scatter. And I'll use a, a very, I'm going to use a very basic scene which is um, what I use a lot of times uh, let's see let's see we have uh, we have a scene like this you know, let's just uh, crank it up a bit okay so let me turn on the grid zoom 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 and uh, we're good now uh, I usually create uh, a plane and a teapot oh well the teapot is about the most basic uh, 3ds max object because it allows you to you know render even round objects and you, you can you can render you can you can really troubleshoot your your shadows and environment lighting with just this basic uh, object it's a very popular 3ds max object so uh, let's let's assign different materials to our teapots uh, let's say this takes the red this takes the yellow this takes the green uh, let me trick up this uh, and tweak this up a bit just the uh, reflections uh, and uh, this is uh, like this is uh, this is about where I set up most of my basic scenes so this uh, shouldn't be new to you too so and there's this goes uh, to the plane plane material okay here we go so good now let's uh, let's run a quick a quick test render uh, okay basically this is what we have uh, seems a little to be reflective might take uh, some render times so I'm not sure I want to okay okay so so that's how we have it now you know some of you may be used to multi scatter or you know all that kind of plugins that can enable you to spread your like enable you to spread your your objects in your scene but uh, basically I use carbon scatter and um, well I've been able to like master it a whole lot. So now the first thing you have to do when you're trying to launch a carbon scatter is um, you know select select the plane, select the objects that you want to spread the objects on top, which which is actually your target. You know when you select it, you launch your carbon scatter by using the, any of these options. Maybe okay, let's go with the populate object to start with. Now because your plane is selected, right? You can actually add your elements here uh, you can have your teapot one you can add uh, your teapot two and you can add your teapot three okay so that means now we have our three teapots in the scene uh, basic I'm gonna teach you basic and then you can you know explore the plugin later to check out all the other options so uh, most of the time if you need to Populate this randomly on this face, which in this case I'm assuming probably this is your grass and this is your landscape. You know, check on the random, and then uh, you can change your option to grainy fractal for your fractal node, and then you say okay, 
so your density you might want uh, to avoid overlapping instances so that you don't have your you know teapots entering each other and uh, come with a quick one and say populate so here it gives you an algorithm right what it does is that it just um, scatters your teapots on your object right so the first thing is uh, let's try and see how this looks so you click render and you have your teapots all over the place various sizes various rotations and co now let's uh, let me just clear the ecosystem and do this again now if you go to back to populate objects and uh, you had your native object i think i skipped uh, one of the teapots uh, native object two native object three okay you can also you can also paint you, you know you can also paint your objects in your scene by using the paint option and then using like single instance and you know dropping your dropping your objects at various places this this is going to be effective most especially if you're trying to populate a scene that you want to control that you want to be able to control the way you have your objects in your scene probably your edges in in in, uh, in a landscape scene or something so now if you say uh, okay let's see what this looks like now uh, okay let me let me just configure this to some five so that we can see a large part of our scene now let me turn off uh, the very log window okay here we go Okay, now you can see that you have your teapots, you know, in, in, in various sizes, various shapes, various rotations, and cool. Now, that is um, basically all the knowledge you need about carbon scatter. It's very, very easy. Now, I'm, I'm going to um, I'm going to do the same for I'm going to do the same for trees and grass, so that you can really understand what I'm trying to do here. Okay, now for you, you may want to bring in, you may want to bring in your trees. You may want to bring in your trees from uh, a scene that you had before. Uh, merge. Uh, let's see. The temp. So here, uh, I have some trees I already, you know, created for my carbon scatter scenes okay while we wait for those to come in okay beautiful we have um, we have our trees here now uh, I think I need to recreate that plane okay now here is my plane and uh, I need to make I need to make uh, make a, a forest out of this out of this scene so that's very easy very very easy now if you look at the way I did my trees I made them you know low poly yeah all low poly trees so that you don't have um, you know your, your, your computer is not going to drag when you're trying to render your scene or something because usually a forest well you're not going to be taking close shots so yeah you can have a uh, low poly trees uh and now let let me just uh, let me just create the, the trees out of this so when you select your plane you come to carbon scatter and you say populate object right uh the first thing you do is hard up your trees one by one just uh, add up your trees one by one. Add up your trees, uh, add them all up. And uh, one one thing too is you need to make sure they are you know realistic sizes, so that you don't get uh, you don't end up with some overblown tree sizes. 
okay uh, I think we can leave it at that so if you come to your random distribution you can change your fractal node to grainy fractal I like grainy fractal because it allows you to have quite a dense you know scene and then you say okay you can ignore all the other settings your density you can hop it a bit and you say avoid overlapping instances you can hop your density a bit and well you can you know you can get to play with some of these settings with time so I'm just going to teach you the basic so come to populate you have your trees in there beautiful beautiful you know you can make very quick test renders and uh, let's see what it looks like Okay, well, while we're waiting for that to render. Okay, well, I'm not going to wait for that. But uh, you, you can see, you can see, you know, we have quite some various trees in different sizes around here so uh, now what I'm going to do is uh, let me let me quickly configure this for rendering so that you can see it okay and uh, here here is uh, a hand result for this test rendering so so basically this is what gave us this right and you can make it you know more dense as you want you can increase your density and then you can the good thing is you can even actually paint your ecosystem depending on uh if you if you have um if you have a scene that is not regular let me close this uh populate objects uh, let's say clear let's say paint uh i think yeah you can see that you can make some places uh, a little bit denser make some places you know depending on the algorithm that you're using because sometimes you, you may want uh, you may want you may want to do you know, similar stuff like this So depending on your scene, really, I mean, uh, carbon scatter is that flexible, and that's that's just why I like it. It's not rigid, and it can give you. It, it has a whole lot of options that you can select from. You can even decide to choose to just paint just one of these trees. You know, you just just all you have to do is just select only selected items, right? And then uh, you probably hold control. Just hold your control and select maybe these three types of trees, and then you start painting that. That is all that you're gonna get painted at that point and then the good thing is you can erase you can erase your ecosystems if you're not satisfied with what you painted earlier on i mean it's 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 a beautiful tool it's a beautiful and i'm sure you're gonna enjoy it okay so uh le let me see if i can show you uh how to make uh, your grass now so that's about the forest trees okay and uh, now i've imported our grass alongside the scene I imported earlier on. That's the HQ grass. You can see the lawn, you can see dandelions, you can see the uh, white flowers, you can see wild grass, and so on. So uh, it, it, it's just about the same step as uh, the trees. So the first thing you do is probably let's, uh, let's clear this ecosystem so that we get everything on a fresh sheet of paper. Okay, so. Uh, let's let's just reduce this in size. Uh, we may not need this much, and this much of a plane. Okay, so now let's come here. So we go populate objects, and uh, we create because we create because we cleared out everything. So we're creating new rules now. Okay, so here are the objects that we want to use. We have a, a long grass. We have. Uh, small grass and uh, 
we have uh, wild grass and probably I should just had them um, I should just had one more let me had one of these dandelions okay and that's that's cool so now the good thing about grass is that uh, if you're not if you're not modifying your distribution uh, the parameters you, c you can change your scale you can you, you may decide to want your white grass not to be as big as you want it you may want your dandelions to be just uh, you know small you may want your wild grass to be less prominent you may want your long grass to be more maybe 1.5 you may want your small grass presence at 1.2 and then your dandelion you just you know scatter all, all over the old place in bits and pieces maybe 0 0.75 so uh well at that point all you have to do now is uh, just click populate and you have your grassy scene populated here now uh if you want it to be much more than this because it looks uh, sparse now click populate again it's going to be much denser and uh, well it's going to take you know a lot of your ram so you, you can just tell it to go ahead if you have a lot of ram and otherwise you may have to you know you may have to stop it so that it doesn't uh, it doesn't crash your computer okay uh, I'm not sure I'm so satisfied with this so let me just put it back uh, and uh, choose grain fractal for my fractal node so let's see what this comes up with populate objects Let's see what this comes up with. Oh, it looks like this grass is gonna be beautiful. Looks like it. Okay, so let's uh, let's see what the render looks like. Okay, here is a uh, resulting scene, and this is this is the outcome of our grass scene. Now you you can, you know, you can make uh, your your ground plane, which is you can make your ground plane, which uh, which is white right now. You can make it have some grassy material with uh, very displacement mode. It's it's all your choice, you know, so that you don't all cramp up seen now there's one more secret about carbon scatter that I need to let you know it, it works best when your geometry is one when your geometry is one I mean I mean your 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 object is is single now let me show you how usually this is what happens when we bring in uh, when we bring in files from somewhere else Okay. Uh, let me let me let me let me let me merge this merge uh, trees before collapse. Okay. Okay. This is this is our scene. Okay. So now, if you if you need to use an uh, if you need to use an object in carbon scatter, make sure that make sure that it's it's a single object. Now let me t let me show you how. If you need to carbon scatter uh, stuff like this, say. You know because you can see that these are actually three different objects if making it a group makes it a single object for you yeah fine but this is not going to work for carbon scatter why because it doesn't recognize groups it only recognizes objects so the only thing you can, you're going to do is you know just convert to editable I mean convert all these objects convert them to uh, editable poly Okay, come on. What's wrong here? Okay, let me see. 
yeah let me just clear this thing up this is all we've got uh, group on group so here goes convert that to an edit editable poly okay I'm hoping uh, there's nothing wrong with this scene just a minute okay I got that in editable poly format you repeat the same for this guy repeat the same for this guy okay I, I have a, a heavy process running in the background okay now that you have this in editable poly all, all you have to do is you know change to your vertices mode and you know just attach just attach your other object which is this and this so that you know so that you have one object now then when you want to carbon scatter that all you have to do is you know repeat your carbon scatter command and uh, get get your object out uh, density that 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 populate uh, let's see uh, clear Uh, change your fractal mode grainy okay uh, density avoid overlapping populate yeah so so that's it okay hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh, I'm going to drop in some links here in this post so that you can get to download the uh, carbon scatter thank you and good luck see you again bye